Alrighty then, it's time for a Jungle Gragas game. Let's get the show on the road. So, there is no champion in League of Legends that better personifies me, in a video game form, than Gragas. And I mean, in, you know, being fat. Anyways, something about Gragas makes me kind of sad. It's off topic to this game, actually, but, you know, aside from maybe Kled and the sort of weirdness about him, I don't think Rai will ever release another champion like Gragas, and I don't mean that the releases they've been making are uninspired or not particularly that funny or something, but look at Gragas, he is the goofy, one of the, probably, I'm gonna just say, the goofiest champion League has ever released. More goofier than Zoe, Clan, or Nar. It's a fat, I'm gonna call it a giant dwarf, I guess? Giant fat dwarf that just drinks and fights in the most drunken manner possible. And that's this entire gimmick. There's no no greater depth to him in terms of story. If Riot tries to bullshit kind of some kind of lore into him, that's gonna make me sad. I just like the fact the fact that he's here in League of Legends, or at least before the lore changes, just because he's a drunk and can I guess fight. I, I forgot what it was. Maybe he was trying to find the best booze available to, or the best things to make the best fermented booze. But it, it's just funny to look at and imagine. And I don't think Ryan's gonna make another a champion like him for a lot of reasons. Some of the reasons being, you know, that alcohol in some regions of the scene is a really bad thing, so whatever. I remember them, I don't know if they actually went through it because they didn't bother reading it as much lore anymore after a certain point. But I do remember they went ahead and mentioned that he doesn't drink booze anymore, that he drinks like juice. And I guess it was because they were trying to localize it for other uh, regions. I think maybe in those regions it is just, you know, juice rather than alcohol but whatever anyways you can see this game starting off a little bit hectic with a lot of early skirmishes and you know surprisingly a lot of that whole little fight between those three of us three versus three they didn't end in more kills until Aatrox sort of stumbled down to the enemy rise anyways in terms of team composition I believe my team has the advantage here of course the enemy team does have you know, the potential to kill someone important to my team like uh, Jinx if the the Nocturne throws himself in properly but at the same time, my team is pretty beefy in the front line, and we have somebody who can follow up with the Yasuo, multiple means of activating Yasuo's ultimate, and pretty high damage. Even, you know, barring the fact that I'm going to be a little bit more tankier. I get Gragas in a very good ultimate here, and just immediately destroy him, getting the, getting the shutdown gold. Thankfully, the Brand was the one getting the kills at bottom lane, so the Jin is going to be a little bit weaker. Unfortunately, the Jinx is pretty behind in terms of CS, so... Aatrox, using his ultimate, manages to get a, get kind of far to his uh, turret before he ends up dying, or I mean mid turrets. And here, I gotta love this, Daria should have seen something was up, because my fat ass was going after him. Like, I'm here just keeping him uh, controlled a little bit, and maybe he thought I was gonna commit fully until I die, but nah, I was just keeping him in place where Yasuo would get in range to destroy him. So we pick up a pretty easy kill on him, we get chased by the Nocturne and the Rise, but you know, they, they don't catch us. So it was a pretty good kill on the Darius, mostly because he kind of fell for the mind games or the trick or whatever. So, yeah, this game is pretty even. Farming wise, pretty level despite some differences in some lanes. Bottom, the, My bottom lane is the weak link right now, so I gotta watch out for it. But thankfully, my top lane is pretty much destroying the Darius. Aside from the very beginning of the game, of course, it was a little bit more spotchier. But yeah, my bottom lane needs help. And you can't see the chat, they're demanding it, they're demanding it, they're asking for it, but there's not much I can do if they don't have it awarded or if they're kind of in odd positions. I mean, I'll eventually scamper down there and do some things, but, you know, you can only ever do so much as a jungler. So yeah, the enemy team is basically camping down bottom lane. Uh, I'm taking mid, taking the CS, leaving these two down their bottom. They can't tur really turret dive them because they're pretty dangerous to turret dive, so that's pretty good for me. My build this game is going to be going with the, uh, it's going to be a little bit weird. Mostly because the jungle recommended items still recommend that, uh, I forgot what that thing is called, a little spirit sperm you can see in my item list, uh, ability power one that used to build into the runic echoes. But, um, yeah, you know, apparently it doesn't anymore, and it still recommends that you build it, so I end up building a dead item. All right for me, but I still build Loon's Echo so I can do some early burst damage. At this point... I'm pseudo tanky enough to not need as much tankiness, but eventually I would want to purchase stuff like the Iceborne Gauntlet, some health like Spirit Visage, Color Reduction Combo, and I don't know, I was thinking, what could I even make out of this item that I wasted money on? I don't want to just sell it and lose out on its potential. 
So, it may not have been the best purchase, but I get Shirelio's Reverie at some point. It does help close the gap a little bit, but it's not an item I would probably ever really want to build on Gragas. You know, Righteous Glory would be better. But either way, catch Rise, but we don't have the power to actually kill him. I throw my ultimate to enable uh, Yasuo's ultimate, but, you know, to no avail, I kind of died. The Nocturne showing up or just kind of being there to counter gank beam was, you know, a doomsday for me. The enemy Rise constantly is putting himself in a really bad position, allowing the Yasuo or whoever is, you know, by there to hurt him a bit. We, this is only our second kill of, uh, uh, against him, but his positioning hasn't been the greatest. So, at that point, I was already taking into account, you know, I could possibly easily engage on Rise all this time since he's trying to take pock shots constantly. And speaking about bad positioning, the Jin just sort of kind of walks into me and, you know, makes easy pickings. And up there, Brand is getting basically killed by the by uh, my Jinx teammate. I think yeah, she managed to survive, and then my Aatrox teammate is in a 2v1 and gets destroyed. He's at this point just kind of split pushing on his own and getting caught and destroyed, even though he's big and fed. Well, thankfully, the enemy Rise is doing the same, so both teams have that kind of straggler going about. I go out, get a little bit too aggressive and put myself in a position where I just get absolutely giga destroyed, and that also leads to Jinx's death. So, yeah, that's pretty bad. This game, again, is really, really even, so it's a pretty good thing. I like these kinds of games because it shows that both teams are overall balanced against each other, and it's going to come down to one of two things. Either they make a huge mistake, or my team makes a huge mistake, or one team makes a spectacular play. Although the mistake is a more common thing to actually happen. Thankfully, my team composition has uh, is at least a better equipped at making things happen, so I'm still giving it to my team. As soon as we get a little bit you know, better positioned, or we find a good fight, we'll just win. And speaking of a good fight, here it goes. I catch the Rise and they teleport in, so it's going to become effectively a 2v2. Thankfully, Rise is destroyed before Darius gets to really commit to the fight. Unfortunately for me, the Aatrox's ultimate runs out and he gets to die. Jinx comes in uh, Jin comes in and gets countered by Nocturne, but now they're kind of trapped since he burned any other gap closers or whatever the hell they had. And get destroyed by Yasuo and me with the Barrow and the Spinny Blade of Death. So, that's a huge swing for me. And that is when I started noticing that their uh, their build is absolutely atrocious. Well, at least they're two frontliners. So, since they don't have an actual tank or someone who can truly, truly frontline, their champions have to sort of pseudo tank it up a bit, right? Uh, the Nocturne going Duskblade isn't a bad thing. In fact, it's a good thing because he wants to assassinate the Jinx. But considering how easily we could possibly control him and pick him off, uh, except in this case where a lot of our stuff were, was down and we were just kind of trapped, you know, caught off guard, the Nocturne might just die whenever he jumps on somebody. Eh, but it's, he's, his is probably at least, uh, the least bad in comparison to Darius, who went to Journey Forest first. He's going to go Frozen Heart, um, fro well, Frozen Heart Rise from Garland after. I forgot what item he built. But it's a little bit too late and also not as good as he thinks it might be. Because, you know, my Gragas, me as Gragas can chunk him quite a bit and control him. So he'll probably just get, I'll control him and then my teammates will just grind him down before anything really happens. And the enemy team can't really respond since they don't have any actual initiation. So, again, they just needed something better than what they're building. I don't know particularly what because I'm not the, the, the a Darius player. But I just felt Trinity Force wasn't going to be doing them any good. And you'll see what I mean. Once the team fight's going into full flourish rather than the, all these 2v2 and 3v3 skirmishes we've been having, you'll see what I mean. Here I catch Darius, you know, he, he basically tickles me because I'm the tank and I control him enough that he has to burn flash. But of course, it's Darius, so he doesn't get make much of a much distance. So basically the Zyra and I kind of, kind of were the ones who destroyed him. Jinx basically only shot him a couple times. Catch the Jin, uh, the Jin and he also uses his ultimate. I would assume probably to just close the gap and you get himself around river so he can catch somebody. Because if he just used it, his ultimate for, you know, to hit a character once, that seems like a colossal waste. Either way, the rest of the stragglers get caught and killed off, so three kills is pretty damn good in, uh, when it comes to having a very, very even game. But again, as you can see by this video length, it's not over yet. It's a, uh, again, we're going for Baron, we're trying to control it, and I'm putting myself in position, because I don't know if they have it warded, but I'm afraid of their uh, potential to turret divers or any, uh, not turret divers, divers and destroy us when we're in a very enclosed uh, location. 
So we easily killed the, the brand. I get chunked down quite a bit, but not enough to kill me. So, but that still means we got to abandon the Baron. Getting a kill, a brand kill from that, it's not the worst thing, but yeah, a uh, uh, Baron would have been nice. But yeah, you guys have probably noticed this pattern that I have in a lot of my games. I tend to get very paranoid about Barons, mostly because I know a lot of teams don't work together when they're doing it. Like keeping watch or, you know, should we continue with the Baron or should we disengage and take off the invaders, attackers or whatever. And that can usually lead to a defeat even though you had the advantage initially. <clears throat> but yeah, in that situation, we sort of made a, a mistake of splitting up. Like I mentioned, uh, my team composition has way better team fighting. We have more control, we have better damage or better spread of damage, but their champions are probably better one on one than the rest of my team. So, I mean, sans the Aatrox. So, if we are sort of split apart, we'll get individually killed in our own little fights. So, yeah, it's not the best thing to be in right now. And they are also trying to prepare for Baron, but they can't really do it yet, so. Yeah, this fight, this, this was a doo doozy. I, looking back onto it on the replay, we can tell that we had more gold. Or, I mean, a little bit more gold. But, holy crap, this is extremely even just throughout, right? Basically even. Uh... Once again, the at least one or two of their teammates are, I mean, the enemy team are by themselves just straggling by doing God knows what. Which ends up leading to probably one of their most important characters just getting picked off and killed without having to really waste extreme amounts of resources. But my team isn't really in a position to completely take advantage of it. We're waiting for minions, trying to collect ourselves, and yeah, here you go, I have the Shirelia's Reverie, probably one of the more pointless items I have ever purchased. And they're buying uh, the abit uh, what are, the abyssal mask I think it's called. I keep forgetting what this some items called. I bought it just so I could do more chunking damage and assassinate somebody with my fat belly. Cause like I said, I'm pro I can probably kill someone important and then just kind of let my teammates destroy the re the enemy team. If they focus me, then we'll win the fight anyways. But at this point, when my once my team is getting more itemized, you can see people are finally finishing off. Uh, they're primal core items, as uh, some would put it. Or, oh, some would put it, me, I would put it. Core items, that's why I just better way to put it. As most people are finishing off their core items, we're winning most team fights, except in this case where, you know, is once again fought with a ill-prepared team comp, a team comp. We weren't all there. Thankfully, the Aatrox is ridiculously big, so he survives long enough to chunk down the enemy team quite a bit. And when I finish off the brand, and the Darius eventually dies, and then we give chase against the enemy Rise, who again is basically Speedy Gonzalez, but he eventually does get caught and destroyed, so hooray for us. Nocturne jumps me, dices and slices, and destroys me too. So, you know, it was a defeat for the enemy team, but it wasn't as big of a defeat as it might look. Technically, I would say it was even. So, this game is still, still very much on par. It's anyone's game. Who would win? Nocturne got caught and chunked down a bit. Then the enemy Darius teleports in probably one of the worst spots because his team is nowhere really near him to fully help him. So, it causes the enemy uh, Brand to get too close and basically die for near free. And then Jin gets killed because who's there to protect him at this point? Ryus can't get too close because he's got nobody around him to support him while he's, you know, machine gunning down people. And this is where their enemy team's weakness is going to start showing itself. They don't have any actual tank and their crowd control is very limited and poor. So the second one of them gets sprung on and destroyed, or if the Darius is nowhere near there to collect as much aggro as he's collecting, then the rest of them will just kind of fall over. So that's kind of just going to spell the doom for them. I'm really big, and or at least big for what I want to do as a tank. Throw myself in there, do some damage, and not die immediately to four full rotation. Or a better yet, absorb a full rotation. Better way to put it there. Here, they burn a lot to try to destroy me, and I don't die. I, I survive with like a very little amount of health, but it all allows my team to just kind of absolutely destroy them they've burned way too much and they caught a straggler nocturne and they catch the darius and then they just give a chase for the remaining survivors eh. 
That one doesn't go really anywhere because they're going for the tower instead. But you catch my drift. I'm tanky enough to at least survive on near full rotation of the enemy team. But that is a very punishing thing for the enemy team to ever do. Unless I'm by myself, of course. And with that, we take an inhibitor, the first inhibitor of the game for us, which will basically snowball the rest of the game. And you can see I caught the Jin by himself. I don't know what he was trying to do, but at that point he should have recalled, but he was scampering about and getting himself killed. Nocturne kills the Aloli Zyra, and, you know, he almost gets destroyed by her plants, and then he die <laughs> does get destroyed by the plants. Yasuo goes in to kill the... Uh, the rise doesn't kill him fast enough, and I chase after him, throw my barrow, and then Yasu Rez is just in time to hit him with his ultimate and finish him off. So, we turned a tide that was turning against us. The reverse tide turner. It's like a laundromat. Spinning one way, and then spinning the other way. And we catch the Darius, who at this point has no survivability to, or enough survivability does not have enough survivability to survive even half a rotation. Their front line has effectively crumbled even when it was barely existing, and that has allowed us to just kind of seal the deal, getting another inhibitor. The game's not truly over yet, but essentially it kind of is. It's, you know, it's one of those things where if unless we do something extremely stupid, we shouldn't lose any further team fights. We have secured a grisly advantage against them. Ah. Anyways, catch a dragon again. Three dragons to one. Again, that was probably one of the bigger markers of our, our, the huge lead we had. Item, everyone basically has full item builds, maybe not one completed, one left, and that's kind of it. The enemy team was trying to go for a desperate, it was desperate Baron, you know, that's kind of their only chance. But they left Bran by his lonesome and he got destroyed. I throw my ultimate in there to get Yasuo his ultimate, who he immediately, along say the Jinx, slaughters basically everybody. And then the, the Nocturne gets destroyed with Yasuo. And then we catch the Darius, and that's just kind of it. It was a desperate attempt for them at the end, and I mean, honestly, something that makes sense to do, but it... It was a, it sealed the deal. And if you liked this video, remember to give it a like. And if you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And if you are subscribed, make sure to hit the little bell up there somewhere so you actually get notifications to my videos because YouTube and stuff.